Um, my name is Lynn, you guys have already met me, but I am an interpretive park ranger. And this is not just Leo's dad, Paul Martin, he is also a magician. And we are here today to introduce you to the magicians of the mountain parks. If you can imagine we're outside, the beautiful mountains up there are getting snowed on right now, and there's all, all kinds of creatures who live up there, plants and animals both, who have amazingly magical lives. So what we're going to do today is share that magic with you and introduce you to them. So I'm wondering if you have a favorite one. Oh, and let me just say, it's really an honor to be here with you on Earth Day. Because I will say this, what we have in our open space at Mountain Parks property, 47,000 acres of land preserved for the wild animals and plants to live in, that's amazing. That's an amazing gift we gave ourselves, and that's an amazing gift we gave to them, honoring Mother Earth and all the things that evolved on her, and letting them live here in the wild like this, and we get to go visit. So what a more perfect thing to explore than that on Earth Day. So, your well, favorite Well, I brought magicians. along some of my favorite magicians of the mountain parks. I think the most powerful magicians in all of the mountain parks. You want to you meet them? Yeah. yeah. I have some of them with me, right here, in this little box. In fact, there's dozens of them in there. The most powerful magicians in all the mountain parks. You're very close, Elliot. Take a look. What do you see in there? I'll put some out on my hands. Can you see? People who can see, yell out what you see. Seeds. Seeds. Okay, have a seat. I think seeds are the most powerful. They're tiny, they're the most powerful magicians because they do amazing things. You want me to illustrate with a magic trick what they can do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a little tube like this. And I'm gonna have Ranger Lynn hold on to that tube. Why don't you step right forward here? And I'm gonna put some things into this tube that you commonly find in the mountain parks. Uh, like dirt. Brought some dirt along. I'll put that in the tube there. <laughs> and, uh, and water. We'll put a little water in the tube. <laughs> and air. <laughs> and we can't get any sunlight in here. I put some of that in, but I'll just use this flashlight as a surrogate. Now, when I take air and water and mud and sunlight, and I try to put them together, I make mud pies. <laughs> but these magicians who are much more powerful magicians than I am, if you take a few of them and you put them in with the mud and water and air and light and they work their magic. Whoa! You feel it? I feel it. That's amazing. You get amazing, beautiful flowers and mold. tubes to illustrate. I've got a round tube that has the grasses of the mountain parks on it. And I've got a square tube that has the trees. Oh, those look like fun little shine trees. And may I borrow a little bit of that foliage? 
I'm going to put a little bit of that foliage, tuck it down into this tube, like this. And the magic of the mountain, stay down in there. The magic of the mountain parks continues. And that foliage transforms into... does its magic on these small animals. This is actually more powerful magic, so I'm going to need a more powerful wand. I've got my extra strong magic wand in here. Here's my extra strong magic wand. So this, watch out, this goes oh, no. off anywhere. Here we go. Trust it. Let's see if that did its work. And if it did, it will illustrate what happens right here in the mountain parks. These little animals are transformed into I know. Now it's where he pushed. Do these animals actually live in yeah. open space and mountain parks? Yeah. yeah. They do. Do they look like this? Uh, I no. <laughs> sort of. Well, I have real pictures of coyotes and owls, and red fox, but I still have a question for you. How did we get from rabbits and chipmunks to these guys? Yeah, how did we get there? So kind of like the rabbits and the chipmunk ate the plants, and the plants ate the sunshine, we have all these creatures being connected to one another. That does seem like magic. So rabbits and chipmunks magically turn into these things. So you guys, what do we call that? When we go from sunlight to uh, plants, to rabbits and chipmunks, to these guys, what do we call that transfer of energy? Anybody have any ideas? <laughs> He's cheating. What do you call that? It's a life cycle. And what were you cheating with? What's another name for it? Yeah. It's a food chain. It's a life cycle that we see in a food chain. How cool is that? Well, we eat, right? Or do we photosynthesize? We eat. We eat. Okay. So we don't make we don't make um, food from sun. Do we eat plants? No. Question of the day. Who here likes and eats chocolate cake? That, my friend, is made of plants. Can anybody tell me how? How? Yeah, there's wheat, right? And wheat comes from what? Elephants? <laughs> <laughs> they come from grass seeds. So wheat comes from grass seeds. And let me ask you another question. Where does the sugar in the cake come from? There's what? There's chocolate. 
and that's from cocoa beans, another plant, and sugar is a grass that's sugar cane. Chocolate cake is a plant. <laughs> Pretty cool. So what do you call an animal that only eats plants? I'm sorry I don't know your guys' name, so I just kind of An herbivore. Excellent. What do you call an animal that just eats animals? Oh, I Yeah. A what? A meat eater. Yes, there's another name for it. It starts with a C. Carnivore. Yes. Excellent. Now, um, is there a name for a, uh, somebody that eats both? Like, I mean, because we eat both plants and animals, right? What would that mean? Omnivores. You guys are smart. So we're omnivores. We are omnivores just like a really big animal that lives out in the mountains that's just now coming out of hibernation. Bear! Who hasn't eaten or had anything Bear! to drink? Or, or, poof, or pee for six months. Those bears are hungry and they're thirsty. And they are omnivores just like us. So let me say one thing to you guys about living right next to our bears who are literally right up there in the mountains. If you live close by, do you think it's smart for you to have food outside your house that a bear might want to come and eat? No. So how about you just feed your birds in the winter time when the bears are sleeping? How about you make sure that you don't feed your dogs outside? Or your trash, you have it secured in a place where the bears can't get to it. And then, if they happen to wander through town looking for food, they won't stop and eat at your house because there's nothing to eat. So, I want to say one thing. There are lots of animals that actually don't stay here for the winter. And this is totally perfect for a magic show because guess what they do? Why? My twin? My So these are some of the creatures that, unlike the bear, they just go away. And they don't go away just because it's cold. They go away because the foods that they eat aren't around to be eaten anymore. The insects are sleeping or the plants have gone dormant. So um, where do they go? You guys were right. They're migrating. They're flying. Where do you think they go? They yeah. go south. They go south. Do you have any idea how far south? <laughs> <laughs> Some, you guys, this is cool. 
Some birds actually have a little bit of things that are like metal in their heads, and they can use that like the compasses we've built to show them how to get south. But sometimes there's other things that are even more obvious, like how about where the sun is in the sky, or where the stars are at night, or where, where a mountain range runs, or the edge of a coast. So there's lots of clues that they have. Um, so it's still pretty magical, though. So I'm wondering if you could do a disappearing trick for us. Would you like me to try to demonstrate migration with a magic trick? Yeah. Okay. That seems well, perfect. We'll use this hat to represent Mexico, okay? And it'll be way over on this table. And then I'm going to use this wooden cube. It has all the animals on it that Lynn showed you that migrate through the mountain park. Solid wood. And I have a little box here that represents the mountain parks. And it's painted kind of a stone color, kind of like some of the granite we have up among the, the sandstone of the mountain parks. And you can see that there's room for these migratory birds to stay right here in the mountain parks. And there's room for all the other animals too, see? Like the bears. Right. But what I'm going to try to do is make them come out of the mountain parks. They don't get stuck in the box. We're going to make them come out of the mountain parks and fly all the way over here to Mexico, but we can't do it like that because that's not magic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me put them back in the mountain parks. Like this. What I'm going to do, close them in the mountain parks. Now they'll fly magically thousands of miles out of the mountain parks, disappearing from the mountain parks and appearing in Mexico. But you know, the most amazing thing is that every year in the spring, they come back. So they disappear from Mexico and fly thousands of miles back and reappear in the mountain parks. <laughs> Closely, look, look, I'll show you again. We'll close them in the mountain parks. We'll make them fly magically, do their magic flight thousands of miles. They appear in Mexico and they disappear from the mountain parks. Look at it. Sure, see? There we oh. go. No, 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 it's not like that. Just say so. All right. I'll open both. I'll, I'll open both doors. This is a difficult audience. Here we go. One, two doors, just like that. It's just okay. You're a great audience. I like you guys a lot. I'll do something I don't usually do. I'll open one, two, three doors. Yup, it's gone. Both 
both the bear and these other migrators because they do a little bit of bear stuff and a little bit of their own thing. And um, I took the liberty of creating this deck of cards because skunks are amazing. They eat so many different kinds of things that they can almost find uh, whatever they need to eat during the winter time. So if it gets super cold, they'll sleep. But if it's not super cold, they'll come out and they'll find something to eat. So having a magician here, I thought I would make a card trick. And, a card, and did you say a card trick? Yeah, because look what I did. I don't do card tricks. <laughs> did I, 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 sorry, I'm not very good. I can't really do card tricks. Oh, but, but come here, come here. Look, you guys, give me a guess as to what you think skunks eat. I know about anything. They're on the board. <laughs> All right. They eat grasshoppers. Have a bite. They oh. eat frogs and toads. Wow. You're right. They eat lizards. Yeah. They eat fairies. They wow. eat crickets. They wow. eat gophers. Yeah. They eat grubs. Gophers. They eat Gross. bird eggs. They eat yeah. mice, yeah. spiders, and it kind of keeps going on. Yeah. 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 It's all really oh gosh. Good. Look at this one, you guys. About, don't say it, but think about it, okay? Beam it, beam it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Okay, listen. I'm not very good at card tricks, and I'm not very good at skunk food either. But I just thought, you know, I have a friend who's a specialist at this, and he came along with me today. Should I get him to help me? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's back here. His name is Spritzer. Spritzer, what are you doing sleeping? Wake up, come on. Everybody yell, Spritzer! Spritzer! Come on, wake up, buddy. I need your help, man. I need to take a third, but I can't find it. I really need your help. Here, I think he's waking up. Yell it again. Spritzer! Oh, there's Spritzer. Oh, don't stop me. Oh, Spritzer, look. See this deck of cards? It has all your favorite foods on it. I'm going to just put that down inside your house, and what I want you to do is find their card. <laughs> you don't like that down inside your house? Well, just find their card, and I'll take them out, okay? So, Spencer, so find their card. Spencer, what are you doing?
very formal black jacket for you because this always helps you get in the mood. Oh yeah, this is a, this is like a nice magician's jacket. Why didn't I have this at the beginning? This is a really nice magician's jacket. <laughs> Imagine my life as a skunk. I have a hat for you, so you have to take your glasses. Oh, a hat. Out. Yeah, is it a nice top hat? Nice magician's top hat. Kind of.
take care of it. What's that? Keep up. So Keep up. this skunk lives in open space in mountain parks, which is land set aside for the skunk to live in. But there are 4.7 million visits by people a year to the place where this skunk lives. We're going to try to find shelter when they come along. No, scare me one of the predators. I know. Oh, no, I know. So, so when we visit, we have to be really smart about how we visit. Like staying on trail will help because it's not likely that a skunk is going to be eating flowers right next to the trail. And if we have a dog and we're not sure, for sure, that they won't chase a skunk or a deer or a squirrel if they see it, what should we do with that dog? Yeah, have them on a leash. Because otherwise, they might interfere with this skunk's ability to live. So, so, but there's, there's a lot of people, so. I got, I got. Yeah, occasionally you have to kind of juggle people, too. This is really hard for a skunk. Yeah. Oh, I didn't say 
guys, uh, here's the back right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't understand. Oh, please, come up and show me what you made. I just can't understand. I'm turning it around this way. Turn it around. Oh, yeah! That's the owl that eats the, the weasels and the chipmunks that the weasels eat. <laughs> Thank you all for coming.